There we go. All right, so um, it's time to reconvene the public hearing for the, the culvert replacement project on River Road um, opposite Chang Farm. And um, last time we discussed the project, but we did not yet have a file number from DEP. We've since received a file number and uh, three comments. So I will read the comments so that they're there in the record and then we can uh, reopen you know, reopen the discussion of the project. The first comment is the commission should ensure that the property owner has signed the Wetlands Protection Act Form 3. And fortunately that's been done. Uh, a signed copy of the signature page was uh, sent to me electronically. So that's part of the record. <clears throat> uh, comment number two, the commission may wish to review the project according to the river, riverfront area redevelopment performance standards set forth in 310 CMR 10.585 as the project consists of work in previously developed river, riverfront area. The third comment, in review of this project, the commission should refer to 310 CMR 10.024, which states in part, Notwithstanding anything to the contrary, in 310 CMR 10, work other than maintenance that may alter or affect a stormwater management system, including work to repair or replace the stormwater management system, and any change to the site that increases the total or peak volume of stormwater managed by the system, directs additional stormwater to the system, or increases the volume of stormwater exposed to land uses with higher potential pollutant loads, that was designed, constructed, installed, and or improved after November 18th, 1996, as defined in 310 CMR 10.04, and if constructed in an area subject to protection under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, otherwise known as the Wetlands Protection Act, or buffer zone, <sighs> as described in 310 CMR 10.021 and 2A through D, the system was constructed in accordance with all applicable provisions of 310 CMR 10, solely for the purpose of stormwater management in accordance with the stormwater management standards as provided in the stormwater management policy in 1996, or 310 CMR 10.056K through Q may be permitted through an order of conditions or negative determination of applicability provided by the work dot, dot, dot. All right, so that's the, um, the comments that we received from DEP. The comment number two is I believe that we have always intended to, re to review this under redevelopment uh, portion of the reg riverfront regs. Uh, comment number three, I'm not sure that I followed it in its entirety, but it seems to me that we're just repairing a pipe and we're not increasing any runoff it's not going over any additional areas that might expose it to pollutant loads, uh, but I'll, I'll ask our applicants to address that comment in particular and see if there's anything that I missed. We're gonna to defer to Terry to answer that comment. Yes. Well, um, we're, we're not changing any, any flow patterns um, that don't already exist. And as a matter of fact, we're improving the situation for riverfront redevelopment um, by armoring that, that outfall, making sure that it's not eroding um, and providing a plunge pool so that it further doesn't erode before it heads to, heads to the stream. All right, so there's no additional impervious or there's no new flow. It's just replacing mm -hmm. the existing system, which I think everyone understood. But I think DEP was just hedging their bet to say, if you've added more water, this is not exactly exempt. So think about it. They, I believe me, but I, I agree, Scott, that was very convoluted. They could have paraphrased that for us and made that a little bit more direct. You know, I think that's, I think they fear that conservation commissions don't refer to the regulations often enough. So in their comment letters, they just excerpt the relevant regulations to make sure that we've at least read them once. <laughs> um, but I agree with you. It didn't seem to me like this raised any issues that we haven't already considered. Uh, be, because this is a simple replacement of the culvert pipe. Um, so I'll, I'll ask then 
um, Terry, Dan, or Jackie, if you have anything additional that you want to submit to the commission or, or to say to the commission about your proposal. I don't have anything to add. I, mm -hmm. I think it was, a, you know, it's fairly clear what we're doing. Um, yeah, I, I think it's very straightforward. Uh, I don't think there's any issues, any outstanding issue here. Terry, from an engineering perspective, what do you think? <laughs> I had to keep it as straightforward as possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's not a complicated project. Yeah, replacing kind, yeah. Try, trying to make sure that what we end up with is a better scenario than what we started with. Yeah. Uh, members of the commission, do you have any questions or concerns? No concerns. Nothing for me. Nothing for me either. All right. At our last meeting, I think we already asked, I had asked you if there were any special conditions that you thought we should put on the, the order of conditions. Um, I think at that point, nobody had any special ones, although I'd raised the idea of uh, a special condition about external fill being brought to the site, being clean of any invasive species. I'm not really attached to that condition given all the invasive species that are already there. So I think maybe I'll save my powder for another project and then we'll try to figure out what exact language makes sense. Uh, but at this point, since you've had a month to think about it, uh, do you have any suggestions for special conditions for the order of conditions? No. Okay. Well then, uh, I guess we'll vote to close the hearing and then take a vote on issuing the order of conditions. So all in favor of closing the hearing, uh, Anne? Aye. Monty? Aye. Andrew? Aye. George? Aye. And I vote aye. And all in favor of issuing an order of conditions without any special conditions? Anne? Aye. Montserrat? Aye. Andrew? Aye. George? Aye. And I vote aye. So it's as simple as that, folks. Um, what I will do is uh, print out the uh, order of conditions tonight, and I'll put it in the town office's foyer. And if commissioners have an opportunity to sign it tomorrow while the doors are open, that's great. If you can't get to it, um, I'm going to be away on vacation next week. So I'll just pick it up at, after I'm done. And um, I think that if I remember correctly, that uh, Dan, you go, you folks were listed as the applicant rather than the town. Is that right? I thought the town was listed as applicant. Yeah, let me pull it up. Yeah, yeah, it was the town. It was the town or the, yeah, Keith. the highway. Yeah, Keith, Keith, Keith your contact. the guy. Yeah. All right, good. Because then I can just put it in Keith's box and I can say it's been hand delivered. Uh, so Perfect. Uh, would you like me to send you an electronic version, Terry yes. and Dan and Jackie? Yes, yes please. That yep. would be great. Yeah. Okay. So once we get signatures, I'll scan the signature page. Um, I'll put it the whole package in Keith's box and I'll send uh, an electronic copy uh, to you folks. Great, thank you very much. Okay. All right, well, All right. thank you. Yep, thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. you as well. Thanks. Thanks very much, folks. Take care. So yeah, I'll put it, the paperwork in the town offices tonight so that you have all day tomorrow if you can get there. If it's not possible, that's fine. Um, I think I only need three signatures in order to make it official. So if two other people get to sign it, then I can sign it and put it in Keith's box. Uh, so if you, once you've signed it, if you could send me an email, just so I know, once we get up to two, I'll, I'll consider that by the end of the day, Friday, I'll, or at some point on Friday, I'll go collect it and, and then process it if I have enough signatures. All right. Um, I guess next up is uh, approval of the minutes from last meeting. So anybody have any comments or corrections? No. All right, all in favor of accepting the minutes, raise your hand or say aye. 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 All right.
So that brings us to updates and other business. And um, we do have a topic for discussion uh, based on uh, a text that I got from, from Montserrat earlier in the week. And so Montserrat, I'll ask you to sort of explain the issue and then we can discuss it. Okay. Um, so last week I was walking in the woods in the in Waitley Center Woods and I came across a little stack of boards and posts and um, by the trail, not where they had been doing um, work before, but on an upland part of the trail. And I hadn't heard anything about it. So I just emailed um, Kestrel and just asked him what it was. And um, I'm actually gonna read from the response so you hear exactly, or I could share it, either one. Go ahead and read it, that's fine. Okay. So Chris Vellante responded and she said, um, thanks for reaching out. Um, I looked into it yesterday and realized a mea culpa is in order. My stewardship team got a little out ahead of me on this one. They observed that portions of the newly designated trail loop were consistently muddy and decided to add bog bridging, moving a little faster on that project than I realized. As a result of that internal miscommunication, Kestrel failed to communicate with the Conservation Commission about this contemplated additional work to inquire whether the change is significant enough to require the filing of a new notice of intent. I put the project on hold until we can follow the proper process. And then she filled me in a little bit. Um, to fill you in, the proposal is to install additional sections of bog bridging through particularly muddy sections of the trail. These sections are mostly in upland and not in mapped resource areas. And that's what I saw. And then she goes on, but unfortunately the team started with a section I didn't realize was planned immediately adjacent to the new boardwalk in the wetland. This section is approximately 40 feet in length. It has 11 supports in contact with the ground, each totaling one square foot for a total of 11 square feet of additional alteration. As I understand it, the NOI permitted 135 square feet of alteration and required 140 square feet of replication. The stockpiled materials that you saw are for two bog bridges, bridge sections in the upland area. The team hopes to install a total of 90 feet of bog bridge along the existing woods road there, approximately 20 supports. Specifications are identical to the original bog bridge. And she says what those are. And she attached a plan and a map, but not very detailed. Um, and then additionally, she put in another paragraph about um, Tom Litwin, which we can also talk about afterwards. That will be a short one. So um, I went back and looked at it again after she um, gave me that response. Um, oh, I, let me just go in order. Then I contacted Scott and I said, um, what should we do about this? And he said, you could, um, we could discuss at the meeting whether um, it just would count as regular trail maintenance that they don't have to go through us for or whether they should submit an NOI. Um, and then I went back and looked at it again. And the part that I saw before is, um, it doesn't look like it's in wetland. It's just, it's just a muddy part of the trail and it's not near other wetland, I don't think. And it's not in a mapped area. It's not in a mapped resource area. Um, and I also went down to um, the boardwalk that they did build, the boardwalk and bog bridging that they did build. And I didn't see something else. So they must've removed the materials. So I'm not sure exactly where she was talking about for the other part that she brought up in the email. Anything you think I missed, Scott? No, that's a good description. I went down and walked it myself, and I agree with you that the, the area up on the old Woods Road does is not wetland. Uh, on both sides of the road, the predominant sort of understory vegetation is mountain laurel and hay-scented fern. And you know, mountain laurel is a facultative upland species, and hay-scented fern is an upland species. So it's, it's, it's just a muddy area of upland. And so I, I don't think that's a big issue for us. The other area I walked it and I couldn't, I was trying to decide whether there was anything new there or not. And I was looking at the vegetation that was growing underneath the bog bridging that's there. And 
based on that, I could not see any new sections of Bog, Bog Bridge. So if they put it in, they did it really carefully and there's hardly um, any sign of it. Well, she, she said they didn't, I think they were just planning it. They, I don't think they put anything in yet. I'm not sure. I didn't see anything new and I didn't see any materials that looked like they were for construction. So I was wondering if they had some construction materials there and then they took it out after we had this communication. Oh, it's interesting because there were, there were construction materials uh, at the kiosk when I went down there. Oh. Uh, but it didn't look like a lot of it. They weren't going to put a, a whole bunch in, but um, in the only other area that I saw that looked like it needed bog bridging was not near the boardwalk so much, but was a little farther up where there was a section of bog bridge, but it wasn't long enough and it, it gets muddy on, on the ends of it. And frankly, I was thinking, you know, they ought to do something about it because it's just going to turn into a muddy wallow or it's going to be one of those places where as people keep going farther and farther around the muddy part, they're going to make the trail much more you know, wide. Well, she, she attached a, a map um, with that email, but it wasn't, it, it's a really simple map. Do you want to look at it? Sure. You can share it. Yeah. Can you make me a co-host? Oh, yes. No, oh, you're over here. Sorry. <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay, so I'm, I never remember the order to do this, but I'm sure I can figure it out. Share screen. Can you see that map now? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly that up, that upper part I walked. Yeah, there were some rocks there. I guess yeah, it was like you said, it was muddy in the up, upland. Yeah. Yeah. So so the um, can you see my cursor, my arrow? Uh -huh. Okay. So this is the this is the part that I saw, and then this must be the other part that she mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the area I was thinking of where there's a little bit of bog bridging in there, but it needs more. And it's, it's not like super wet. It's just really wet in the springtime. It's probably technically wetland uh, for at least some of it, but uh, you know, it's up to us to decide whether this is just normal maintenance of trails that we've already permitted or whether this is something that you want to review and, and permit either through an RDA uh, or an NOI. Well, trail maintenance because I know, like I said, like I said, if they don't do something with it, it's just going to get continually worse. I think, like I said, especially down in the the wetter the wetter area, you know, in the wet near the wetland. I think. Yeah, and one of the things that I thought is is that this we could we should think about this not just in terms of the Waitley Woods property, but all mm -hmm. other areas of town where there are trails. You know, would we feel comfortable for people who are trying to maintain active trails, you know, putting in bog bridging or doing other things to try to make sure the trails are dry enough so that they don't turn into a muddy mess? Um, and if it's something that we feel is, is that we're comfortable saying that if, if what you're going to do is work exclusively within the footprint of the footpath and you're going to do minor activities to try to either stabilize the the area or make it possible for people to walk through it without uh, churning it up, that we consider that just permissible maintenance of an existing activity or an existing um, action. Wouldn't it make a difference whether it was in wetland or not, like in a resource area or not? I guess that for me, the question is, if it was, if it's an active trail that's been there for a long time, I would say it might be sort of grandfathered in my mind. If it's like this trail where we've, essentially we permitted the trail with certain accommodations for the wet spots. Once the trail exists, then it should be maintained. And we don't want to put any barriers up to people maintaining trails, especially if it's going to protect the resource rather than damage a resource. And so I'd say that if there's a footpath there and it's one that we allowed, then we should allow people to maintain it. I guess that's an argument I would put forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I, I guess I would have asked that whoever it is, if it's Kestrel or some other organization, that they notify us when they're making changes or additions. Mm -hmm. Yes, a heads up, yeah. Yeah, that, that's good, just so we know that it's them, for one thing, and right. just as a courtesy. Yeah, I mean, that could be that could be a sort of a good expectation is, is that we're generally fine with it with prior notifications so that we can, you know, confirm that it is minor in, in scope and not some kind of a major drainage project or, a, you know, a snowmobile bridge over the, the Dingle Brook or something like that. All right. What do you think, George? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree. Andy? Yeah, I, said, I think it's a minor a minor activity. I think, like I said, just for future reference, have us have them notify us if they mm -hmm. are going to do any further maintenance. OK, so I can. Um, Chris said she's not going to be on the, in this discussion, obviously. Um, so I will respond to her. I may check the wording with you, Scott, before I send it, and I can CC Concom, so it's official. Does that sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. Yep. Okay, great. Um, and then there was one other thing uh, at the bottom of that message. She she said, um, "Is the Conservation Commission going to?" She said, "This is the last application by Lincoln Fish of the invasives in Tom Litwin's area," and she said, "Is is Concom going to inspect that?" And I checked the agreement and it's actually not the last one. The last one is next year because there were three. Um, and I didn't know if Lincoln had done his application yet this year. So I emailed him and he said, and this was on Sunday, I think. And he said, I'm hoping to get over there on Monday or Tuesday. And I said, can you let me know after you do so because we might wanna do a site visit. And I have not heard from him so I don't know if he has or not, um, but after I hear that he has, do you want to do a site visit? Or would we not be able to see anything anyway? I thought we might want to just see how it's going. No, not everybody speak at once, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gonna take a while to see results, so. It has been a year since the first application, so we might be able to see a difference since then. I guess for me, I, I can't remember exactly what it looks like. So if I see some, will I know that it's less than there used to be? I'm not sure. Right. Um, I guess my inkling would to say, would say, let's wait for the third treatment and if it happens in the spring, we could maybe do an inspection in late summer or fall when hopefully that vegetation will have died off. But I would even consider the idea of waiting one more year and coming back the following year to see if it's if three treatments was enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So no inspection needed this year. Well, let's see. Do other people agree with that? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, I will just check to make sure that it happened though. Yep. Okay. Um, Cause I heard that Lincoln's um, retiring. So oh. I, I said, I hope you will come out of retirement to do the third treatment next year, just as a reminder. And what do you say? He didn't respond. <laughs> All right, well. we'll I put a smiley that. face on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you in agreement, George? Yes, I am. Yep. Okay. Uh, again, Monty, thanks for, for taking care of that. Um, and I think that we have a pretty, I mean, we have a pretty common sense board anyway, but I think sort of being clear among ourselves about what it is that we will, that we don't feel like we need to review sort of empowers any one of us to be able to answer a question from somebody that asks. The thing that's tricky about telling somebody, no, you don't need to file, is that it's not really a decision that one commissioner can make, it, even the chair. It should be you know, the majority of the commission that collectively says, no, you don't need to file. It's not as 
fraught if you tell somebody, yes, you do need to file because when they show up before the commission, the commission can overrule the decision. But if you tell somebody they don't need to file, then the rest of the commission may not even find out about it. But if we talk among ourselves, like now the understanding is, is that if somebody wants to do trail maintenance, we say, well, generally we're okay with that, but just let us know ahead of time, just so we can make sure that it's, it's minor enough that we don't need a filing. And in that way, any one of us could answer that question for somebody because we've agreed as a group, you know, what our policy or our process around that would be. Anyway, that's the way I looked at that issue. Is everybody comfortable with, with my interpretation of that? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Does anybody else have any other business or updates to, to share? Be quiet. <laughs> Prices are too expensive for anybody to do any building. <laughs> yeah, I think we're still going to, one of these months soon, we're going to get uh, an NOI for work at Hurley Heath Park uh, with the new uh, parking lot and driveway and some paving and a bicycle repair shop potentially, uh, or a bicycle repair station, you know, so a place where people can put their bikes up and work on them undercover. I heard that the um, that cannabis sale didn't go through with um, John LaSalle. Oh, yeah, I haven't He's heard still flower farming. Oh. Yeah. I guess you, eventually. I mean, it, I can't believe how many cannabis places have opened up on the retail side. I know. I don't know how many production mm -hmm. facilities have been permitted, but it seems like it's due for a bubble burst eventually. All right, well, if nobody has any other topics to talk about, we can pull the chain on this meeting and, and, and call it quits for this month. Sure. Keep, it, keep it under half an hour. <laughs> ka <-ching. Yeah. laughs> Works for me. All right, thanks everybody. Okay, thanks again, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night.